Now, we're gonna bring in Malice and Chance to commentate this last match, but I actually have a question for Chance right now. Chance, what's going on, brother? Yo, so we're gonna see a matchup between Krim and also Mathis, two entirely different players, right, that bring a lot to the table. What do you take, well, what is your take on a matchup of these two amazing players? Well, I think my take would be you almost know what you're going to get. Methods is going to end up having stats at the end of the series, but that doesn't necessarily the walk away with the W because uh, I think Krim with the boys are going to be very hungry to take this one down. Well, let's ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Game Fuel Marquee Match, last uh, last of the day, the Mountain Dew Game Fuel Marquee Match. We've got the stats coming through from charts. we got ourselves maps and modes. Ali alluded already to the Bocage not being present, and I think she's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's a double dose of Tuscan followed by Gavutu Berlin, and of course, Desert Siege to close things out. Charles, this should be an interesting one, brother. I like your touch there. I like Valley's question. I also like the fact that we're not wearing sunglasses. Why is that, Chance? Uh, I do not own a pair of sunglasses. I just I haven't had one in like a decade or something like that. That's absolutely fine. But ladies and gentlemen, this should be an absolute treat. Once again, your Game Fuel marquee match here to close the day out. Task and Hardpoint will start things off. Should be a lot of fun. And uh, we've had our, a fair share of what? Everything today, brother. It's been spicy to say the least. Aces, wild 3-0s. That last one in, in itself was clip worthy from start to finish. Bryson Tun fell asleep literally seconds after it finished. Uh, yeah, I mean, can't blame him as well. Probably takes a lot out of him. Something that, like, we haven't had a ton of this year, but I feel like the community is, like, usually kind of obsessive is, like, the top five and top ten, like, player list because after watching that last series, I don't know exactly where Attach is going to fall. I have not made my own personal list, but, like, he's got to be in the mix. Like, I don't know if he is top five, but, like, he got to be in top ten somewhere. Like, Attach has been gross all year long and now when his team is having success as a whole he looks even better but while attach is doing that on one end for this series obviously it will be a very interesting one not just for the fact that it's like the empire state going against boston for as far as like american cities goes like the best rivalry honestly that we really have to offer but just for the fact that you have the storyline for boston where obviously they have exceeded expectations they have been great all year long but they have struggled against the tippy top teams which i think right now subliners especially after the pro-am are proving themselves to be and of course for the subliners well as good as they have looked as of recent they are still in 11th in the cdl standing so these guys still desperate for wins and to even take it a step further uh, obviously saw it in the keys to victory the bokash hard point isn't going to be in the mix and that is where the subliners have had a great deal of success so I'm very curious as to how many different maps that hardpoint prowess will actually extend to, or if Boston will have the answer. I mean, I think the another consideration you had, Chance, I'm not sure if you already brought this up, but yeah, the, the record overall still for hardpoint, not that great there for the New York subliners. Hydra Methods, they will be our top performance there for the hardpoint. We'll have a quick look at those two again. As far as the numbers are concerned, slight edge going towards Methods right now, the 1.17 KD, the 146 damage per life. All that pretty good, and again, We'll see if that does come to fruition in match. But again, for Hydra, hey man, he's been fantastic since he hit the debut in the CDL. His opening match in the Call of Duty League, he took on Atlanta Phase. He bested Atlanta Phase back with that old New York Subliners roster in Cold War. He has had non-stop individual prowess, fantastic performances, yet to really go mega. Again, a big win at the Prime Classic was wonderful and very, very well deserved. But we'll see if they can keep that life and love going here against Boston Breach. And Charles, we'll see if this, you know, rivalry continues between the two teams the two cities throughout the remainder of the league as well a lot of fun either way i uh, just so many good things by the way miles uh, this is more of like a, an american sort of trivia thing but if boston ever trades a player to the new york subliners at any point in like the cdl it doesn't matter who that player is they will become the greatest of all time ah well we'll see if that comes true chances crystal ball is out and he's been rubbing it ferociously here on a mountain new marquee match as we get things going tusk and hard point up first and foremost Boston Breach, New York Subline is bound to be an absolute treat. And if today has shown us anything, friends, it's that anything, and I mean literally anything, can happen here in the CDL. Let's get into this one, start the series off right. The last one of the week here in the qualifiers leading up to Major 3, Task and Hardpoint. Let's get it. And we're kicking it off with Zinni, right? Uh, you know, one of the few guarantees that we have in the league, I think might be fair to say of, you know, he's going to be able to throw up numbers and even off the break, he makes a nice little read and he'll be locking down at least the middle of the map for his team. Actually, I take that back. He does get traded. And Capsule when he's effectively Whoa. by himself is so deep in the mix. And I mean, actually, he just bought his team quite a bit of space to actually get near the hill. 
Basil is a wild man, right? He will always slide in no matter the circumstance. He did all there, man. Twinkle Toes was putting in the work. Nero can't get much done there on the front line, but Capsule is finding himself in mid-map once again as the hard point sitting currently in the hands of the Boston Breach. Capsule, a nice set of kills. Either way, flying forward. Big tags. Here we go. One more to be had. And it's Krim, and it's three for Capsule. Beautiful stuff. Any more to be had here? No. The multi-kill comes to a close. The time as well. The final five seconds going to be finishing up here in P1. Column, bottom right-hand side of the minimap, up next. And overall, obviously a, a solid hill for Boston, but now your Mountain Dew featured player trying to make the play. He will be in effect blocking these spawns or at least forcing out over towards Church, but right now you actually have Nero on the hunt behind him, but a Ooh. little bit too late in Hydra. Ooh. At least able to take down one, converts it into the second, and well, you convert that into a little bit of hill time as his man slides on over him. I mean, that is a heck of a play right now. I thought he was going to be dead to rights maybe before he found even one. And nope, c'est la vie. Subliners now in the hill. Kismet's hops aren't quite as good. And I think that's a spot that Havoc was showing off. But whatever the case may be, bloodbath around this B2 point. You're back over to Hydra. Six and four so far. Locking down the point. Test still on for now. Capsule swings around the corner. Catches himself. Nothing but Hydra. As the trades on trades come to a close as the market now finished it is going to be crim six the last man up we'll be able to take the lead back for his squad but they will lose out on the rotation boston breach left hand side of the mini map mid map is all covered they've got the roof cover push they've got the side now with zinni is on over by field all sorted oh dear until hydra comes through opening time might be cut a little short bar this push and that's just good utility coming out of Nero, right? Because right now, pretty much only one lane of the map is open. As Methods actually turns to watch Roof and up top fire. Well, Nero does his job, at least takes down that second player. But there's the opening. The player from actual fire side, it doesn't matter if he gets called out. He wins the gunfight anyway. And a little bit of poor positioning when Vines was open. And well, Boston just get bullied straight out of the hard point. And this could have been a nice little chain. Admittedly, kills going back and forth as Paul last oh. man standing and oh. Paul does not care. The only man that needed to be towards the hill was him and well, he delivers as these final 20 seconds potentially going through. That's nice stuff out of Paul X. Gets himself even at eight and eight and thus far in the matchup. The hard point time ticking up now for Kismet. Still 10 seconds to be had here. They're gonna hold him in position. Now rotations down towards Church. The next hard point up here on Tuscan. New York subline has got a bit of a break to do. Boston have got themselves locked into this one early on. It would have now pulled the lead back as hard point now pops open. Methods tagged up, backs up, stays alive. Pressure now from Hydra on the inside of the church. Kills are all good, and he can only find one before being brought down immediately. And now, oh my word, the subliners, they break on through. That's their hard point for now. Oh, I was going to say, that looks like a dangerous door to go through. And Paul X is there for the reads, but right there, New York just doing a really nice job of just dominating the top side of church. But hey, on the retake, Boston, it takes them all of what, five or six seconds before they just get the instant retake on church. And by the looks of that timing, it will be a back and forth hill as either team really able to stabilize or maybe not. Actually, this will be a chalked up time. Boston rotating with 20 seconds left. That is a good chunk of scrap time to get rid of. Maybe Capsule on the minimap oh. actually wants to fight it. His Kismet's winning the gunfights on rotation. So you have scrappy battles at old, scrappy battles at new. And it looks like Boston actually come out on top of both. Cap wins the gunfight in old and well, Boston would have been here first, but it is just a bloodbath in this game. Wild stuff so far. Paul's making things look good. Overall, is the next hard point. P5, always a wild one. Let's dive in for a quick listen in with the New York subliners. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice, nice, I have your bottom. I have your bottom. I have your bottom. I've, I'm watching roof. Yo, they flip, no? Yo, one's, uh, yo, one's mid, one's mid. One mid. Well, well done. I have mid. I have mid, so. You I'm going to jump flipped. up in the fire. No, 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 no. We're good. We're good. There's okay, 20 okay. fire. All right, I'm watching my back, though. No, I'm getting, I'm getting mid. Yo, I'm watching out, I'm watching out. Yo, we're on the chimney, 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 chimney. Yeah, chimney, one more deep left. There's two. Deep left, deep left. That's fine. Right. That's fine. Watch me behind you. Look, 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 look. I know, I know. Yeah, they're behind you guys. Low, 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 low. Cap, cap low, cap low. Weak, one shot low, one shot low. He just has two low as well. He's sitting on middle. He's low, 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 low. Logan, Logan. Low, 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 low. Low, 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 low. Low, low, low. Low, low, low. He's in the mid. Weak, one shot mid, one shot mid truck. One shot mid truck, one shot mid truck. Not in close. I know we need a play line. Get through nuke. Yo, cap was here. Cap was here. Front fire, front fire going ammo box. In my box. Oh, Ammo box is half a bullet. Oh shit. Alright, listen. We're right, pushing tree. Pushing tree. Right, I'm coming. Pull, 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 pull. Hydra is still keeping things going. 17 and 11 now for the New York subliners. The lead working out for them. Everything's looking all fine and dandy. Overdoors the next set of hard points now. Back over to first chance, second set. 
And I will say, as far as that listening goes, that's honestly a good example of how in Call of Duty Vanguard, even at the pro level, you can never be quite sure of where they're spawning. It takes so long to actually figure out and establish which side of the map they're going to be on. Like, four-man wipes are honestly scary, but whatever the case may be, it was not a perfect uh, P5 hold from the subliners, but still getting decent time nonetheless with they chain over towards this first hill. But now Boston try to be quick on the brakes. They got a nice little swarm on hill, and DJ Halley's found his new home. Yeah, 60 odd point game right now for the subliners. A lot of work to do for Boston. They've got themselves hard point time for now. Map control and spawns for next. Can they retain all of those with the oncoming push now from the subliners? Two players through front. Shots are all in. Zinni's once again got that top church position. The hard point's been overwhelmed. A few seconds now going away from them. Got to watch out though. You can see that minimap. Players now from New York all over the place. The setup in position now for Boston. Have to hold on for dear life. And already what methods gets first blood in case Kismet finds a nice little route. So they'll be spawning out P5 is Nero. The whole team's coming uh -oh. and they make the reads. They take him down. And now if you're inside the hill, yeah, you're going to get pinched from every single angle. DJ goes for the repositioning, but loses the gunny. Subliners haven't actually made the break yet. You see all those nades flying through, though, and that'll at least be good to take Cap down. Split below Capsule right out of the water. The stun's coming through now, and the check from Kismet. Hydra's going to finish up the kills. All good. That's a break, and it's all nice now from the Subliners. Trades are there. Kismet and Crim6 getting the job done. 20 seconds remaining on Column. Should be going the way of the Subliners as Hydra, a Mountain Dew featured player. 23 and 13 right now. Your boy's having a wild one. All good now. Rotation over to third towards the fountain once again. And you can see Boston feeling the pressure. They send two different players to try to fight for that old scrap time. They're actually sending Capsule there again, but New York every single time are winning those gunfights to keep those final seconds. And if you keep fighting for old, that leaves something on the map open. And that's how Hydra has found himself in this position. He's waiting for his teammates to work their way through the middle of the map and Methods certainly aware that he is near oh! five by Hydra with the gunny again. Make him the main AR. You clean up those two players there on point. Everyone now from Boston Breach spawns mid-map. They have a bit of a journey to get across. Capsule through field side now. TJ gets brought down by fire. Nero now through the front. Crims up, finds at least one. Shots are good now. Ball slides into the gunfight. Catches himself one, but it's two from Zinni. That's a massive break, and that's the Hilda Breach. Oh no, Kismet flies on through. Last man up now for the subliners. He's going to find himself in a pinch, but what a set of plays that was. Still, though, not a fun situation where you get broken that quickly on the Fountain Hill. So Boston overall still get a, a dub on that point. But this is not an easy rotation in the slightest. The good timing will help out Capsule a little bit as they have now taken control of the top side of Church. You can see, though, he is getting spotted on the cross. So subliners at least know what the situation is. I just trying to make plays and Capsule might have just found the opening to get around back to finesses here. Maybe it was just bait for his teammates, but nobody wins the gunfight and subliners hold on to the hill. They break the church again. It's amazing to see them do it. 25 points now for the win. Paul on the outside. Good shots from Paul. Nero is going to find an opening. Does manage to get something going now. Onto the point go Boston. Has to be magnificent hard point play from here on out and over to Hydra. Making his way through the back line. Reinforcements now stacking up it is still anyone's game if you can get in there for boston start chaining the hills together but subliners they're knocking on the win here comes the hole 20 seconds technically can't win it here anymore they're gonna fight for the last few seconds maybe but chance again 15 seconds plenty of time that boston sorely need this is gonna be a tough one well, they've at least controlled the spawns. They know everybody's going to be on the right side of the map. Cap's going to pick an angle out here or maybe slide out too aggressive instead of holding the angle. And now you don't have the pressure on the front side of the hill. And that makes your life that much more miserable. Methods, I don't even think you can really afford to die here. Maybe play post to the back, but he makes his move. It's bait for the teammates, but it looks like they Whoa. might fall like dominoes, but Capsule's there for the final one. It's only TJ that can take him down. He does get it indeed. Kismet now trades through mid. You've got another opportunity to break this wide open for, for subliners, but Boston holding this one fantastically. Worry now about that P1 rotation. We've seen so many Tuscan games come down to the big finish here, and this one is shaping up to be exactly the same. Boston still holding P5. Hydra now with the opening. 33 kills to his name. Looking to add number 34 to the list. No, Capsule says nay. And up top, hard points now in the hands of the subliners. Massive trades coming through, and mid-map control may go to Boston, but they're opting to hit the point. Oh, and New York are actually, yeah, they're leaving the scrap time. I was going to say, you could always afford to hit old for the P5 because you only need nine seconds. And if you take your time to rotate, you might have to worry about the pinches and not fun oh, gunfights no. to have, but they win the intros because it's Hydra, because of course it is. P1 time, initial easy for the subliners.
There's points open now. This is it. Final moments of the game. Kismet's got field covered. He's got it covered through mid, though. The contest is there for a few seconds. Nero gets in, gets one, gets dropped. That should be it. Ladies and gentlemen, the game goes to the New York subliners. What a start it was. And I think it was a sneaky crim six. So on that P5, man, he just went straight to the new hard point. Eyes on the prize. Good stuff at the subliners. The hard point streak continues. And that is, I mean, it feels like Miles at this point, every single Tuscan ends like right from the P5 <laughs> and whoever time. wins those like first initial gunfights on P1 ends up getting the dub. And uh, I mean, I had a half of mine in the moment. Maybe you just hit old because you're spawning up at 20 seconds. You only need nine and you can obviously take your time to get the one break on P1, but they make the call to rotate early and then they pick up every single kill along the way, locking down the middle of the map and playing it perfectly in the end. And uh, I mean, funnily enough, Kismet and Paul X were massive in the damage category while Hydra was actually the main slayer for the team. So everybody for the subliners putting in some serious work, but I gotta say, it really did feel like Hydra was what? Winning the SMG gunfights against the subs of Boston, winning the AR gunfights against the ARs of Boston. Hydra seemingly could do no wrong. I mean, yeah, when your teammates are outputting damage like that, there's not a whole lot you have to do except for line a bullet or two. But there we go. Map number one finished. Tuscan going the way of the New York subliners. Boston, little too little too late in the end there. But hey, wonderful stuff when it comes out the rest of the squad. Everyone looking fine. A couple of massive fights from Capsule again. Mr. Cleanup. He was another guy finding those kills in all sorts of great spots. And I don't know, man. I think it was a, a tough one at times there for Boston. But keeping things together against a squad that has looked very strong and hard point. No easy feature. And it's worth pointing out, by the way, that three piece from Paul X is, you know, probably one of the bigger moments in the game as well, because there was 25 seconds on that Fountain Hill when he picks it up. And whoever the fourth player for Boston was started rotating off spawn just out of the expectation that surely my three teammates can handle Paul by himself on Fountain. But uh -huh. a little moment like that sets up subliners not only for the easy rotation, but also to collect a bunch of time on Fountain. And it really felt like sort of after that moment that subliners just had too big of a lead. Boston always fighting off the back foot. And when you're not comfortable, you're having to do things like on P2 where you're sending players into flood old time because you have to fight for this scrap. And really just subliners never look back. 252 28 map number one is done but don't put your shoes on just yet friends we're staying on tuscan search and destroy on its way in just a moment after that and of course the gavutu control map number three we'll see if we have to go there again in map three you know we've got the three o's today there are spicy ones indeed we to see the course the starting matchup see how crazy crazy starts of the day qualifiers here have been wild mate we still don't know really what to actually expect when it comes to major three we can't wait to be frank but wait, let's get into the search and destroy chance tuscan for now for both these teams i uh again i'm not really sure what to how to how to sit this one uh, we don't really know in general with vanguard because it's a little up and down at times but what do you, what's the gut telling you well i mean i'd say for new york like the game mode they're obviously still good but i think they're six and four in their last 10 so i think it's really the big plays they've been making guys like paul x that I mean, just at certain times, take over. And, like, he is that guy that when he should be dead or easily traded, he just makes the big play. We saw it in the hard point, and we've been seeing it consistently from him in the S&D. But, obviously, this has been Capsule's home as well, right? I mean, the rookie putting up numbers like that, the 7.2 in kills per round is towards the very top of the league. And, honestly, for Capsule and Nero, I mean, these are two players that have been somewhat inconsistent. Like, when they're hot, they take over games, but occasionally can drop the stinkers. But for Cap and S&D, not really the case. Consistent performer and can very much go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. But, obviously, for Boston, it will now be a necessity to try to get that bounce back because I think New, York's are, or New York answered the question well. Bocage or no Bocage, still good at hard point. Yeah, very good hard point indeed. Paul V on your screen, Paul X. He's had a great run of things in the professional side of the Call of Duty world since making his big debut for the London Royal Ravens back in the Cold War season. He's certainly turned a lot ahead. Same can be said again for Capsule. There's massive outplays of, of, of superstars. When it came to that kickoff classic, he certainly shocked the world. Or the gentle giant himself has been a staple of Boston's success. Here we go, though, into the search. Nothing but goats, a lot of heroes, a lot of old legends in this matchup, but we're going to keep an eye on the newcomers, Capsule and Paul X, for their respective teams to see how well they fare. We roll now into Tuscan, search and destroy. Trust? No idea where the hell this goes, mate. Absolutely no clue. The subliners. Oh, yeah, of course it's Italy. But again, subliners have set themselves up for a good one with that nice big win right off the rip there in the hard point. 
And I mean, they might just be trying to get that hot 3-0 as well, right? Or obviously they'll be trying to get the hot 3-0. And uh, I know the stats don't look good for the team, right? Uh, 11th down the line for NYSL on this map. But I think a good chunk of those stats are with, you know, one of the four different roster variations that the subliners have brought out this year. So it really is about turning the tides. And just for example, you already mentioned it, Miles. Their hardpoint record overall, uh, I think, is now 17 and 17. So subliners are like a dead even hardpoint team, but in reality, they're like 10 and 2 in their last 12. So they're trying to pick those records up. We go. Whoa, oh. Tage, an ode to the great Kobe Bryant. There we go. Methods finds himself his third in the round now, and the kills are all good. Paul lost, man up. The hell are you going to do, Paul? Talked about how dangerous you are. Let's see it, lad. Finds himself one. The ace is on. We've already had one today. Seven seconds it took Envoy to eviscerate Minnesota Rocker. Paul's taking a sweet time, but we'll see if patience pays off. Uh, TJ's going to spot him, but I believe TJ has the sniper, and he's trying to go out the middle of the map, and whatever gun that was, I think maybe the rat -a tat tat TJ there to take him down, and just a nice little angle. No one over committing. Basically, just, you know, every single lane covered by one player of Boston. But obviously, this is the moment. There's nade number one going towards the tree. And TJ oh, from no. the middle of the map. Point. I think it was him and Cap that were able to connect on the, the two. So that's just good utility. The stuns to check on exactly where they're going to be. Are they on the tree? Nope. But we saw them cross. That means they're closer. Let's land this nade on their forehead and get that nice little two-piece. If you're lucky, it takes two nades again. Everyone running uh, Fortified, one of the perks here in Vanguard. Saves oh, you from hello. explosive damage. Cat hello. Roll. It's a couple of sweet kills. And once again, the New York subliners finds themselves in a 1v4 situation. This time, it's Krim, the old goat, and he's pinned down inside church. You will find no sanctuary here. Your boy's in trouble. Make a meal of it, it may be. But they're flying in. Sitting through the front door, guns him dead. Another decisive round from Boston Breach. Uh, yeah, Breach are deciding these rounds in the first 10 seconds. Uh, I mean, leaving literally zero down. I mean, you almost like blinked and Capsule already picked up two. And that is a lightning fast pace. If you're able to get control of the middle of the map on offense that quickly on this map, uh, I mean, that is almost a, a guarantee for the round win. So there you go, Cap just doing it himself in the end. And nice round for Boston. Dominant early on. Looking way confident out there. Let's see if they can do it three times in a row. It's three kills for... Oh, there we go. It's a snipe from TJ. Gets himself number four. He's on a four spree. Methods on a three. Capsule finds himself on a two. Now, over to TJ. Card on K in hand. If Hydra gets a little bit antsy and he might poke that corner, he's going to find himself a world of hurt. Oh, will he do it? He's on that left-hand side of the screen there. Just edging forward. Ah, don't do it, son. We are going to stay on board with this one because if he moves, if he moves, it's only so long I can build this up. It's a Hydra, give me something! No, TJ choked! Jiminy! Great shot, Zach. Hey, I was gonna... <laughs> yeah, two got out, by the way, in the middle of the map, but the, the setup from Boston was oh, perfect. Krim. Krim, that is the 17th teammate he has had this year. Just adding another one to the list, and that'll be another one oh before that does God. not last very long. I, I mean, I gotta say for Boston, that was pretty much the perfect setup. The only thing that was even vaguely open was the middle of the map, but whatever player it was obviously had the coverage to you to hold a nice little angle. So TJ's first blood really sets up the entire thing. Number four, Nero, was locking down P5. The duo over towards the U side of the map. One was on the God heading. One had the off angle to watch mid, and obviously TJ up top. So, I mean, you get the first blood. Turn that into a perfect setup on the minimap. It doesn't get any better than that. There are more World Championship rings in this lobby than there are kills for the New York Subliners right now. Paul managed to get his second. He's just going for something spicy over here. It's not quite going to work out. Oh, okay. Okay. Big difference now. There's two players down. Oh, three players. Nero. Oh, it's all on him. <laughs> but my God, did he make them work for that? Son of a... Beautiful shots out of Nero, man. Woof. Unreal. I in my mind, that's kind of like one of those moments where subliners feel like, all right, we got a dominant round, like we're back on the board. And I mean, certainly they're happy to get it, but you're getting two piece like that. It's just like, it's in the back of your mind. Just that added extra little stress of like, yep, nope, we got to keep working for this. This is not going to be easy. But hey, at least subliner is able to make the play. TJ doesn't hit the shot. So on defense, you bully out the A side of the map. And now on offense, you turn your attack over towards B. You've gotten sniped. You've gotten naded over towards A. So... I suppose this is just the, the next place to go, but 
Nero will be the, the lone defender for the moment. And Nero, we've seen him do crazier things. Uh, the window, you know, the wall break. Beautiful shots. Easy peasy oh, for yeah. Nero. A delight to watch him work here on Tuscan. The old emperor. Can he find his third? Crim's in trouble. Nice reach out. Bang! Nero, what a play. It's three in a row. Here comes your ace. Round the corner. He's going to sign, seal, and deliver it. Nope, stolen. Unfortunately, it does happen occasionally to packages in the mail. But Nero, a beautiful three. His teammates are on their side of the map. I mean, there was basically no need methods. That's just rude. Nero probably had it. I mean, whatever the case may be, subliners are being incredibly polite, just handing these rounds uh, and making them very easy for Boston. I mean, Kisman tries to cross, just dies. <laughs> the next guy has to challenge a guy that's going to be holding the pre-aim that already knows you're there because he heard everything break. And you're taking a bad gunfight, you get fried. And then, uh, I mean, Krim just walking face first into the stun grenade and literally not going to break a sweat. Boston apparently in this map. Nice little comfortable 4-1 lead. Very comfortable indeed. Caps it all. No, I'm going to get the first blood. Ira is going to get traded out. Well played there from Teach. Oh, Paul can't land a single bullet with a rat. Will he be able to get something there with a car? No, because it's going to be the trades in mid-map. That's all good for now. But you've still got these players from Boston now huddled up in mid. And Kismet, he's popped dead silence and he crept his way forward. The party's gone though, and he's now left all on his lonesome. The good news is he got bombed down in position oh. there. Subliners in a sweet spot. Why would Krim give that up? I, I think they're worried about the flanking. Okay, it ends up going perfectly. I was going to say, Kismet did spot Nero, like, flanking through back church, and that's why Krim was looking that direction. And nearly cod timing costed him, but all's well that ends well, and it leaves Methods in a one versus three. And collect that bomb, but yeah, you just got spotted in the dead center of the map. That is just praise. <laughs> He'll get shot in the back, and hey, subliners! They're bounce back around. Again, they have to work for it a little bit harder than Boston is, but that just means they're down, not out. But yeah, it does feel they have to, they certainly have to work a lot harder. Boston are not making this Tuscan easy for them whatsoever. Subliners, though, keeping it competitive, keeping it all together, not letting this get away from them. They worked so hard in that first hard point to get themselves the opening map lead. It'd be such a shame to whiz it away here. Here we go though, another round. 4-2 still Boston Breach. It's first to six for those of you counting at home. Heavy stack through mid now for Boston. Snipes up still for TJ, but the bomb's going to be. Oh, that bomb's going to be very, very slowly. I think this is New York subliners probably trying to coordinate nades once again, but while well, they're spending all this time trying to get some nades on board, Capsule in your spawn already with the first blood. And now if you try to go to B, oh I was going to say, you're just worried about the pinch. Cap's getting all the intel. Oh my God. Doing his best to stay alive and he backs him down for long enough that he soars back in. Capsule, there's many things that he cares about. Dying is not one of them. He really did try to make it work out. Kismet, though. Hero play. Catch the nade, throwing it back. Saves the team, essentially. Subliner's very own Steve Rogers. And Kism they're checking every corner, man. New York subliners are combing their way through this map like a kindergartner with lice. They're making it work, baby. As TJ can't find a single snipe. Gonna catch one of these players out. He's got easy pickings now. Less than 30 seconds on the round for Boston Breach to get something done here on defense. Oh, that's just, uh, again, the car timing at its oh, finest. Lord. Wow, yeah, Methods gets caught, and wow, the instant collapse of the round. You Nero. don't quite... Yes, you do have the angle, Nero. Ripping heads for the next kill. This would be a, a very quick 1v3. The bomb's going to plant Nero aggressive, and he's coming through well. He's just going to be hunting this player down. It'll be a quick 1v1, but Paul Lex makes the read and saves Ooh. his team there in a moment where if that round slips through the cracks, that could be the dagger in the map number two. That moment of opportunity does get stopped and just the, the cheeky little sight in your head. I don't even know if it's actually like popping over or not or if the bullets just connect anyway, but whatever the case may be, uh, a very delicate spot to plant. Nailed it though. Almost managing to get himself another 1v3 situation. But the New York subliners, they're not out of this yet. Right back into it now. One round separating them here is the opening salvo of fire has gone big and Hydra, you Mountain Dew featured player on the flank, finds one, making his way immediately towards bomb. Can't check all the corners though, but Nero, oh God, he's absolutely destroyed him. Massive stuff out of Hydra, keeping the play alive. Methods backed on up. Is that it's a tremendous bit of work and you are on the verge of leveling things up for the subliners. It all comes down a capsule. 
and he gets spotted and tagged up as well so now he's gonna be completely trapped in and maybe you can army crawl your way out of it but look who's in fire uh -oh. it is death welcoming him in cap with open arms very solid round and uh, i mean you know no secrets about it that just boils down to the awkward engagement between nero and hydra should have been traded but lays down in almost the the perfect sort of spot with the bomb being just obstructive enough that hydra able to pick up those two kills and just a, a solid play call aggressive as can be straight through the dead center of the map quick and easy flank roll tied up para tuscan Woo. Was an incredible opening from Boston Breach. Has vanished Goodbye. slowly. Just like Paul did there. Absolutely gone. Oh, Goodbye. nice laid out of Krim. Nice job, Krim. Kismet. Forward they go. TJ's now in a tricky spot. Well, can he find any more with the snipe here? Shooting the shadows. Nothing to be found just yet. As again, now Nero backs on up. He has been an absolute legend for Boston Breach so far in the round. The bomb making its way towards B as Tej. If that heads on a swivel, he might be able to catch him out at the very least. The timing could be great. He's in that top green position over by that church side of the map. Nero's got field covered. Tej, your spidey senses better be doing a little bit more than tingling. Here we go. Oh boy, catches Hydra. It may have been a collapse. The damage could have been there on Kismet as well. And here goes Nero to finish the job. And he'll finish it indeed. Krim, last man up. 2v1. I, and, you know, they're just playing too, or too well together at this point. They're just wrapping together and protecting each other for as best as they can. And Krim has to go pick up that bomb as well. He is L triggered up and ready to go. But by the time he has moved 15 feet on the map, the Boston players have just full wrapped this all the way to the backside of P5. And he has just now picked up that bomb. Does not have the high ground. It does okay. get spotted, but Nero chows and leaves his teammate that has the sniper. But... I assume TJ's probably picked up another gun, but this is former teammates going at it. TJ trying to run away because all you have to do is check bomb at five. He's on Easy it. Easy win Tej. for TJ if he plays it. Now you just run away, win the round. There you go. Boston getting it done. Ha <laughs> ha TJ. He saw that little head of crim plant at the bomb and he was like, hee <laughs> and he scuttled away. He can breathe out the sigh of relief. He's managed to save it. A brilliant bit of work on the round. Good call from Boston. Even better play call from TJ in the individual moment. Krim nearly made it happen. He could have called TJ's bluff. He could have held the bomb plant. If TJ peeks it, that's the kill. But hey, you never know. A moment like that. That point, Boston Breach and TJ making it look good. First blood machine. Both sides of the map will do it with different guns. And Hydra, not as aggressive this time. Maybe waiting for the perfect moment or maybe a player to overcommit. methods right now playing with metal boots waiting for the chow to come through patience pays off spots out hydra and there's the trap they hunt him down and now have the 4v2 beautiful teamwork now it's a 4v2 subliners one man per bomb site and cream six now in the middle of the map nice bit of parkour to get himself back over towards his pal paul but it's an A hit now from Boston Breach. Playing the numbers perfectly. Here they go. Should be able to get this one down. Lay this out. Ample time to hold it together. Can Krim find a pick? That would be one thing. As Paul, with that sniper, has he seen anything? Oh my. Oh my! Gets one. Pressure was on. Through the side of the truck. has gone. Capsule's there. Krim now got to go big. And he's got shots in. But the two-man hit. The old bait and switch. It's an absolute classic for a reason. Austin Breach, level us up, 101. And look, I mean, good teamwork, good first bloods coming through. TJ getting it done on both ends. Capsule lived inside of that well and was always there to either trap players in or to fly out and pick up pieces. It was like, what, half the rounds for were just dominant on the side of Boston, but even when things got a little bit trickier, still able to clutch up. And uh, I'd say that's a pretty solid map too overall. Even TJ getting the 1v1 against the former teammate in Krim. Maybe the round that really seals the deal for the team. So certainly not an easy 6-4 win, but Boston ever happier for it. Indeed. They certainly needed that after the closely contested first hard point in Tuscan. But now we say goodbye to Tuscan. Everybody cheer we make our way ourselves over now towards Gavutu for that control. Map number three here. 250-228 in the 6-4. It's been a fun one so far. And again, we're kind of forcing it. We're hoping for it for a sort of a, a historic and continually storied rivalry between these two teams. It could happen. It could. Or not, you know, you did, there are two options.
it could also not happen. You're absolutely right, Chance. Absolutely right, as ever. There we go, friends. That's going to be the first two maps of the series done. We come back after this quick commercial break. We're going to go to, we're playing some control. One of these teams will take the lead here in the series, and it has been an absolute joy so far. Don't go too far, friends. This is the Call of Duty League. Duty League is brought to you by Zenny. Armor your eyes with blocks gaming glasses starting at $24 by visiting zenny.com forward slash CDL. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Mountain Dew. Upgrade your game with a scuff, the official controller of the Call of Duty League.
Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back. I'm Mountain Dew Game Fuel Tactical Play. It's going to your boy TJ, who had himself one hell of a round, Chance. Yeah, and for sure, he's a, a Kalat hit marker. So unfortunate in that regard, because I don't know. Have we seen a Kalat this year? I feel like Vanguard hasn't delivered in that category. We haven't been blessed as much, but this was a great round from TJ. Beautiful reads, plays Krim like a fiddle. Knows the tendencies of his old teammates, plays the clock, the bomb situation, the high ground, you name it. Puts a, uh, a rock and hard place between a situation which would have otherwise gone against him. And hey, there we go. The round goes his way, as does the map. So that's going to be 1-1 one, one here in the series so far. Boston tie things up. And I'd say going into control, it's a, a bit of an interesting pick from Boston as well, because they were actually the team that bans Berlin control. So maybe in scrims haven't quite figured it out. Maybe New York has just looked good on that map. But whatever the case may be, that leaves Gavutu control open where Boston have a three and eight record overall. It has not been the finest. They're winning like 39, 40 percent of their rounds in total. So bit of a mystery to me why they left it open again it has to just be not a fan of berlin so spicy pick we'll see what happens on the map but i, I think new york will definitely happy to to see the big old boat well we'll see this could be a, a longer series in that case but uh we have received confirmation from the observers no collapse this season not a single they're going for one there with the snipes ah well lots of time still able to maybe make that happen gabutu control here we go map number three on its way friends we are loading in It'll be a good one now for the New York subliners. Will Boston Breach, have they put in the effort, put in the hard work there in the scrims, and maybe they've got a trick or two up their sleeves to try to take this one and make the series that bit shorter for themselves. We will find out as our Mountain Dew marquee match continues here with Boston Breach, New York subliners. There really are just basically zero times where players line up and search for collats. Like it, it is incredibly rare, especially off the breaks, but conversation for a different day. As we go into the Gavutu, it'll be a just four man A hit on the attack for New York. And I mean, hey, good news for them. They've already got complete control of the boat. Two players up top, a player near the point, but no one's hopped on it. They're waiting for the kills first, and well, there the kills come. Yeah, Kismet's already laying prone. You've got yourselves finally onto the point now to start getting the capture. Kismet going from prone to airborne as he finds another kill. There we go. Three dead now for Boston Breach. Back into the spawn they go. Kismet still on an absolute tear. He's got himself three right off the rip, and he's having a good time here on the roster. Capsule's in. Nice shot, set of Capsule. I thought that was going to be another for Kismet. Second segment of A is already gone, Chance, and this has been a very, very profitable execution on the A side of the map. I mean, hey, pretty much the, the perfect opening break. And of course, the, the pressure you put over at least the direction of B draws the players back to make that clean and easy for the A capture. Gives you two minutes to work with to actually try and cap B. But right now they are going from what, in my opinion, is somewhat of a different direction. You try to get in their spawn and make things mixy and go for kills, but you just have to weed out so many different corners, check the bushes, check the rocks. And while Paul Lex is here, he'll be getting stunned. Players will spawn right behind him and eventually he should fall. The rest of the team is going to be fighting for ring. You say should. He's finding the kills. And finally, Capsule once again. Old faithful. Truly reliable indeed in these kind of situations. Does get it. That's going to clean the last few players out from that side of the map now. Boston Breach can breathe a sigh of relief. Just over a minute 20 to work with here. 20 lives as well on the other side of the board. Beautiful nade out of Capsule once again. Trying to keep methods covered. He's the man the furthest forward right now for Boston. Staying alive indeed. Hydra. A yeah. little bit of help from his friends. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. In that case, it was actually my enemy who somehow well worked out. Just over a minute, still chance. Boston Breach, hold the line. Yeah, I think New York actually might have the record for most teammates in this game. Uh, I mean, I think, you know, Krim by oh. himself almost is certainly in the upper <laughs> echelons, but even in Hydra in that moment. But hey, here's the good news. That is a three-man wipe, and you already have the ring control. And hey, make it all four. Pollux right now, the lone man on the point. Hydra's Ooh. there to join him. Kismet in your spawn, killing you. And this might turn into a pretty quick B cast. Oh. You're trying to flank, but Kismet at least is going to be able to call this out. The players in the hill looking towards ring. Hydra, though, does get dropped in. Only two men left on it. Boston might be able to secure this on defense or at least oh. get him out of the point. Paul X, the last man standing. Paul X, the last man standing. He comes to hit, but there's a crossfire. It is Kismet. He's staying alive. The capture is still good. It's still going. Kismet's just done an absolute hero play. Oh my God. They can test the last minute now as Paul is going to abandon ship for a brief second. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, the New York subliners. Hey, we play in Berlin or Gavutu? What is this? Opening round going the way of New York. In, in no shot. I, I mean, you know, perfect setup when they're actually in the point. You have one guy getting the spawn kills when they actually put more bodies on the point. They turn around. But here's the crossfire. Nice. I mean, when you're playing on this map, you feel like when there's one guy in the hill, when you mantle up on the tank, it feels like it is a guarantee that you're going to kill the guy on the point. 
But when both players do it at the same time, and unfortunately line up for Kismet like that, well, it'll obviously cost you. And that is a beautifully strung together round for New York, who, I mean, without question, now have a massive advantage in this game. Unreal. And uh, a lot of that, again, a gargantuan performance so far on Gavutu from Kismet. 11 and 5 as he starts the round once again, looking extremely, incredibly, in, in, insanely strong. Defense now for the New York subliners, looking over towards the A side of the map. But you've got yourselves a sneaky play there. As Boston Breach now, they've managed to slip their way on towards B. And it is Caps, we're getting the job done. Krim's got their ring controls. This could get ugly quick, but again, Cap. We trust him to stay alive in situations like this. Now the pressure is on. Subline is trying to do the housekeeping and get him off that B zone. The easiest said than done. Capsidal is somehow still going despite the crossfire from Krim. Paul now getting involved. Is he going to be able to catch him out as well? Just about. Great work out the subliners. That he managed to get a whole segment on his own. Yeah, I mean, you know, Boston will certainly take that, but I think Krim is up here making good plays the entire time. Instead of being hyper-focused on just getting Capsule out of the point, he's making sure to keep the ring control, keep the pressure on the front, and when you need to turn and actually get him off the hill, he was there for a little bit of help as well. So just keep in the back of your mind, Krim's going to be on a five over towards ring while your uh, new future player Hydra gets bad timing and dies in the boat. Krim's on a five spree. Got to clean these players off the boat side. It's going to be Kismet and Paul to get the job done. Now, Krim can play a corner, find a little bit of a sneaky bush to hide in. Maybe the back of a tank at the moment in time. Well, a couple more kills is really what he's looking for. Method sniffs him out. Great work again. The clock has been stopped once more as the pressure towards A continues. Less than 30. Boston Breach have got to get themselves dug in here. Here comes Hydra. Nice work. Keeps the clock flowing. Capsule is going to bring him down. You should be able to get on this one if you are the Boston Breach. That's easier said than done, though, the way New York subliners are playing. You pushed up towards Gring as well. Uh, I mean, good news. Do you have a little bit of ring control, but there's a gunfight towards the top. That'll be a freebie for Methods. Unfortunately, that player just kicking open the door. And keep in mind, Crim6, when he was on a five, couldn't get the streaks. And well, Methods streak gets shut down as well. He only managed to get to a four, but actually TJ now out on the point. He's picking up kills on the cross as well in New York. They weren't wrapping back off spawn. They were still putting the pressure at least a little bit towards A. So they're forced to send everybody this direction. TJ gets one before he falls. And I'd say right now, Boston at one point, they were down five lives. Things looking a little bit closer now. Yeah, 11 lives for Boston British now on the attack. You've got 13 for New York to defend with. New York's starting to push things out. Two players towards ring, two players towards the backside of the B zone. It's all down to the B zone. Just over a minute to get the job done. Boston, take your time. Krim's going to keep that line of sight safe. You've still got a lot of pressure towards that ring side, and that is what you're waiting for now for Boston. The numbers and the opportunity, but they're now going to have to make it happen themselves. Hydra, unfortunate timing. Pistol still in hand. Here we go. TJ, he managed to provide an opening for now. Will his teammates get anything done with it? Yes, they will. Full ring control now. Krim's been cut down on the beach. Over to B we go. Yeah, Krim just keeps getting caught out in situations where he is a little over aggressive, and now you're a little bit turtled. You still have decent defense around the point. Well, Krim off spawn wins a nice one. The nade's coming through and just like that ring control gets snatched from boston you are now pretty much running the map Krim trying to lock down the middle as well he knows cap is nearby but right now subliners have everything covered only 15 seconds left on the clock boston they'll have to be perfect to have any hope of clutching this one but it's looking like that will not be the case subliners should be going up 2-0 and really it's about who's going to get these final kills an extra one for Krim up to 10 and wait for it <laughs> it could have happened capsule could have managed to make the contest but the gunfight comes through from hydra and once again new york subliners here on gavutu continuing to show the dominance nice work there on the defensive round they find themselves here on map point boston time to dig your heels in the sand lads this is gonna have to be great and just the fact that i mean they're gonna have to what win at minimum two offensive rounds on this map is you know, I suppose it's never shocked, but we'll see what they can manage. Maybe try to get a little bit of momentum with this round on defense, get the gunning flowing just a little bit more, because I think what all four players right now on the side of Boston negative on Givutu. Again, the, the three and eight record overall, uh, certainly not ideal. Uh, if they're not strong in Berlin to have two maps that you don't have a ton of faith. Yeah, that's not great. That puts your coaching staff in a very difficult situation when it comes to the vetoes, but here we go. Last ditch now for Boston to try to stay alive here on Gavutu. The defense has got to hold, and so far you've got yourselves one player now on A. That's going to be Kismet up and about in the business. Krim's now backing him up. A bit of an angle to work with here as Capsule continues to roam, but his timing's a little bit off. He's not able to find too many players here, if any, only Paul. And that kill helps. Now over to the point. 
making the most of his position and his life here but Grim he's making him work for it and the old goat those horns come on through and Nero caught unaware as well Krim having a whale of a time top ship yeah, I mean, they're just running in circles trying to find Krim on the point, and I think that's even Krim probably getting a couple tags on methods through the windows and through the walls. You're trying to sweat for these kills, but yeah, now it's Paul X top third, and I, well, you didn't get number three, but you're just getting picked apart right now. Not a fun feeling, but TJ trying to apply the pressure. But any ticks you're able to capture, certainly good for New York, but hey, they get him off the point, and you still have pressure way deep past ring. Capsules on the opposite side of the map, so Boston, now for the first time, able to somewhat set up this spawn trap. Chances more than a feeling for Boston. It's an opportunity now to actually get it going. Hydra still. Can he escape? Yes, he does. Oh, dear. It might have fallen to pieces. Hydra's got himself through. Nero could stop him. Tags in. All good. The trap may still be on. That was it. But there's less than 30 seconds. Boston, don't let up. Don't let the New York subliners get out because they've got an avenue to make their way towards A now. And again, if Boston are in a situation where they're going to have to win at least one uh, offensive round, I mean, if they're doing it with six tips captured, uh, honestly, the fact that New York only have two for the moment. This isn't a terrible look for Boston, but this might just be the opening to get that final one through and buy the extra time. And there it goes, eight points secured. So I think New York is making sure that things don't get too crazy. Important for them to get the final one and maybe a minute to work with to see if they can make some magic happen. Crazy that that is how it goes here on Gavutu. Kids, mate. Just waiting for the boys. If he gets a pick here, that's massive. One kill is going to give him the clearance to make his way forward. Hydra, our Mountain Dew featured player. A little even in the stats department. He's trying to clear out this low side of the cliff. Has a feeling that Nero's there. Could be huge. Timing on this could be massive if they can find the kills. Oh, spidey sensors are on. Yes, good work now. Subline is forward, they go. Clock still ticking. Less than 30 now to play with. They should be able to make something happen here. And if they get on that B point and capture a chance, oh, me, me, oh my, this would be one hell of a Gavutu. Oh, that's the moment to strike two. Paul likes to get the kill on the cut. Now you got oh the form on the hill. You take care of Beach, and now you get at least one body on the hill to stop the clock. But obviously, this could end on kills Ooh. as well. Paul X challenged because the nade was coming through, but a nade from Cap on point just to pretty much stop that entire push. And there Ooh. you go. The trades are in. So utility being used to perfection. No craziness happens. Not even the extra tick to come through on B. And Boston will clutch up at least on this defensive round, but that is somewhat of the, the easy part of the, the comeback in this game. Now for Boston, the hard part. You're going to have to string together an offensive win. Oh, sorry, brother. There's about two, three moments there again where the sublines really could have made it happen, if not for a couple of the magic gunfights, supreme nade from Capsidal. Like it, a lot has to go right for Boston, and it did. You got that one lifeline now to work with. Turn it into a hope. Turn it into a prayer. Stay alive right now, Boston Breach. This might honestly be time to just go for a, a B hit straight off the rip. Try to make some magic happen or maybe send two players that direction, two players towards both. So uh, an interesting setup. We'll see how it actually pays off and a couple of bloods get traded. Kismet on the Godhead. He does get dropped in. Capsule, yep, just tries to cross out in the open and that is an absolute freebie from Krim. So... I mean, only sending two players that direction is a little bit tricky. Now you have no pressure towards A. TJ wins a big one, so a little bit of pressure towards B, except for the fact that you never got ring control, so you're just going to get shot in the back. That's the New York Subliners kill team flying around the map, finding everything they possibly can. Still got Capsule to deal with. He's managed to slip through. Dead Silence helped out. Oh, dear. Will it keep going now? Hydra, the challenge is there, but the gun was up. Great work out of Hydra to stay alive. Mid-map, all covered now. Hydra, he's done his work. Kismet, Krim, Krim, you name it. Kill feed all New York Subliners all day, baby. Now the trap. They're trying to get it set. Capsule keeping his teammates alive, keeping them afloat. As all this air, they desperately need it to stay afloat here. I mean, you are begging for an ounce of map pressure, though. I mean, Cap's the farthest one forward, but you can't even step over oh, towards no. A. Try to go towards ring. You get shot in the back, and these are players that are just incredibly difficult to actually root out. And Idra can take his sweet time as his teammates are coming off spawn. He knows where they're going to actually pop up, but hey, Methods makes a good read, catches out Hydra, and those two kills, you find a little bit Ooh. of an opening. The traits come through, but just don't have to over chow which Nero does so Krim gets another one and Methods now last man standing at least for a moment around Bow in Boston they just oh. cannot buy any sort of map pressure that's pure Hydra classic French phenom 
14 lives for Boston Breach. 10 seconds to get near a zone. And, well, what do you know? They're on a B. Oh, man. Paul's made the read easy straight away. There should be one more player close enough. No, that might have been it. He just won them the game. That's it. Done. Dusted. That one shot from Paul. Was anyone there in time? No, it was a not point not on the clock. As Paul X wins the gunfight into a capsule, flying through the air, seals the deal. Another good map to the subliners. Here we go. Chance to have taken the lead. And I got to say, you know, when I'm playing ranked miles, if I'm going double negative in my mind, I'm like, you know what? I will just sit in a corner on the objective, let my teammates do the work. But Nero's going double negative and he's like, no, I will take these chows every day of the week, whether or not they're going to fall. And uh, I mean, obviously things on offense are already difficult enough, but Boston getting out slayed by 18, 19 kills, uh, you know, just a never no opportunity to have any success. Uh, I mean, we played an extra couple ones, but New York literally just wins that in round number one. Uh, with a dominant offensive win. It's great work across the board from York. Everybody lighting it up in the kills department, especially uh, I'd say for Kismet, right? 24 kills, but with the 14 extra assists, 38 EKIA, not too shabby for a four round game. Beautiful stuff in the four round game. Again, that coordination from the subline is that opening round, just knowing when you've got the advantage, you've got those four players dead, you managed to hit that point. We'll have a quick look across the highlights now and hey, I'll tell you what, friends, it was a good look from the New York subliners. NYSL coming out on top here on Kavutu Control. If those of you just joined us, it's 2-1 in the series so far. Match point subliners. And I also like the idea, just a, a pretty cool look at the opening break, right? You're waiting for, or Kismet, excuse me, waiting for a player to come up the ladder. They have a nice little setup, sort of playing it like S&D and that ends up paying there. That's the big kill, by the way, just that double kill on the cross. That's what really seals the deal for the first round. So Kismet, I'd say probably the MVP on Givutu in my heart. <laughs> he did a great job. His first round also was pretty spectacular. And that cross kill was something else, mate. Brilliant stuff. Massive finishes again, and, and when it comes to, you know, the map and mode, we've seen Kavutu, some wicked comebacks, amazing work. Again, look back towards Major 2. Plays we saw, you know, everyone on LAG make. We're starting to see a little bit of a different look now, and it's sort of age of Berlin control making their way forward. Offensive rounds are becoming more and more, you know, achievable in teams. And it comes down to the teamwork, the game knowledge, the way everyone's playing. They are up. It's going to be interesting to see what it looks like, you know, the control mode here on Vanguard by the time Champs rolls around. God only knows. How we'll be guessing these games go in. I'm going to go ahead. You know, this is not a, a shocking prediction, but by the time we start, like even in the majors, there are certain players and certain teams that you can see have already built up a bag of tricks and they'll occasionally just show off more and more. I, you know, Shotzi, I think, is like the primary guy. Sell him obviously in the same category where like there's almost always like one brand new thing you get to see. By the time Champs comes around, I can only imagine uh, of how ridiculous this, like things are going to start to get. But That'll just be a, a fun thing down the line as far as this series go. Well, you already know what the name of the game is. New York Subliners have been on an absolute like smoke show tear in hardpoint. I think 10 and 2 in their last 12. And uh, they go to Berlin where funnily enough, they actually have a positive map record, right? Like Tuscan, they were 2 and 8 prior to this one, obviously because it's a brand new roster. But Berlin has probably been one of their better maps the entire year. There you go. So whether the map counts there or not, current form is certainly what is going to be selling the story right now. New York Subline is looking to close the series out 3-1 right here, right now on Berlin Hardpoint. It's on its way just now, friends, loading in, and it could be it. Boston Breach, though, Chance, this is a team that loves to surprise, a team that loves to shock and awe us, and who knows, this could be, this could be it. I mean, if you look at across the player comes, you'd never tell the stress. Three players right now are having to scratch their foreheads and play with their heads at the same time. You would never know the New York subliners were up in the series. They do look a little stressed, right? Am I crazy in saying that? I mean, no, every single armchair psychologist right now is just furiously taking notes. Probably try to, you know, break down exactly what's going on in their heads. But whatever the case may be, I think the biggest head scratcher for me is why did Boston not want to play Berlin control? Uh, I mean, again, if they're not having success in scrims, then it's obvious that you're just not going to play it. But I would just take a book or like a page out of the Seattle Surge book. Just be like, hey, Castle, play like Fred. Go be annoying. Go for the spawn kills. Live inside of fire. Just like take those routes because I feel like stylistically that could be where Cap could absolutely yeah. feast on the opposition. But uh, I mean, again, they had fan that went out, played Gavutu. The record's now three and nine. And I think at least in the back of my mind going forward for Boston teams, that's sort of the, the major theme that I'll have of what are they doing in control? Yeah, we'll see if uh, I think you're right. The stylistic points there. Capital is a fast player. He's real dicey. He's really good at finessing and staying alive in tough situations. It really would suit him well. 
see though, we're not necessarily going to get to see the Berlin control, but the Berlin hardpoint. This is the map and mode where he made his now iconic spree against the New York subline is funny enough. So well, we'll see if history can repeat itself. 4-4, four, 6-3 four, for the subliners. They've got a good record. And the form is great. We'll see though. This Mountain Dew marquee match could come to a close right here and now, friends. Berlin hard point, map number four here in the series. Do or die, Boston Breach. And I, the biggest theme right there, right? Obviously, New York just solid at both the holds and breaks, but Boston have the, the better overall average plus minus, and that's because they are one of the best break teams in the game. So that'll be the, the biggest question mark. New York, when they're actually winning these rotations, can they hold on? But obviously to be New York needing to break first because just because of spawns, Boston get the free control the hill off the break. They're in. Here comes Hydra on the outside. Good work from Paul X backing him up. That's going to give Hydra clearance to make his way forward now. Nades tags in. TJ's guns are up. Will he be able to find much here? As Hydra on the outside of the point slides through and it is a glorious break. The New York subline is not quite finished yet, though. It's Krim in off spawn straight to the kill feed. Zinni's can dropped as well. And that is that, ladies and gentlemen. The hard point is all New York subliners. As good as it gets. I mean, similar to like the Gavutu control, right? They almost had the perfect opening break that they needed. This time it was making sure Hydra has the clearance to flank from outer. And now Kismet gets set up top third to catch all these players on rotation. Free kill number one. The intel will be on point. Sees the next few. And I mean, he's just going to be slowing him down at the very least. You already see number six has moved in towards the hill. So he's really just buying his teammates time on top of the fact that now he can late pinch. He does get caught out, but... Now it's Hydra's opportunity to try to make a play. Yeah, and Daddy's methods watching the flank, making sure he's safe over to the second half point we already go. And what an opener this has been for the subliners. How will the break go now? Hydra, where do we got, son? And he goes, finds at least one. The in and out shots now, as you find on this P2 point, the mail room is a tough one. Krim finding two more here. Hydra on the hunt. His second kill now in a row. That's your Mountain Dew featured player for good reason. Nearly gets the snap on a Nero. Not enough tags or damage or whatever in, but the break is fantastic and it is on. Subliners back on the hard point. Yet another moment right there. We had one in Tuscan where Subliner's not too quick on actually reading the spawn. So two times that they have struggled at least a little bit, just looking the wrong direction. And well, Boston at least take advantage of that to try to get inside of P2. I just trying to make things mixy and mixy indeed. Kismet Ooh. wins the, the two piece. New York Subliners have the spawns for new. And hey, you're just stripping away a bunch of extra time on P2 and you continue to shred. Kismet finally gets taken down, but now this is the test. Can the second best break team in the game break into P3 or will this lead get out of control? This could get out of control here real fast. That's going to see the subliners already in the rotation down and out. Here comes the hit though. Teach to the outside. Great awareness from Kismet. Once again, having a blinder of a series so far. Heads up play. Takes care of that side of the map. Now all eyes forward over to Methods. Can they sniff him out? He's made his way through fire. He made a bit of noise there, but he might be able to creep on through. There's one. In we go. No. Paul makes the read. Gets the kills. The lead is only getting worse now 30 seconds remaining and that is tragic too because methods if you get the two piece well you do successfully break the hill and get a little bit of time but unfortunately just can't get the second one pollux wins the big one and all that just for boston to pretty much off spawn run straight back in the actual hill so i suppose losing the first one-on-one -on -one gunfight you buy out yourselves a, a little bit of time but either way you're going to be down by about 60 going into new and well, Boston is one of the best teams in the game at breaking. They were towards the bottom when it comes to actually holding the hills, and P4 is one of the most difficult ones to actually hold. See if Hydra can be the guy to really open things up. Is wait maybe for Paul X to start moving through train, but they are getting chopped down along the way. Yeah, they certainly are. 100 points for the New York sub minus Lyle Cross. Boston Breach with the control. Now let's go for the dulcet tones of Boston Breach. In the listening. Okay, we're gonna flip. Yeah. You're on the deep right. I need over time. Pitching P5 here. Hey, time. He's like, for laying down front side, yeah, 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 yeah,
He just snaked me, bro. Yes, Lana. He's got uh, two, two, P5, two P5, two P5, two P5, Paul. Yeah. Okay. I was Boston Breeze trying to get themselves back into the mix here, Chance. Now back over to Radio CDL. We got ourselves a big old lead for the New York Sidelines, brother. They're having a whale of a time. Yeah, I mean, I gotta say, they are just struggling in this game, right? With like individual players as well. Kismet was getting super high value early on. You hear that, hey, we're missing Hydra. And by the time they figured out, Hydra's already shooting in the back. And I mean, they called out Paul like six different times. One shot, but Paul X just goes on a six free inside of old. And now you just got subliner players flying oh, all over you on top of the nades connected with your teammates again. I feel like this, like this stage, maybe it's just this stage where the teammates have been constant. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of them. We're seeing a, a, a fair, fair too many team nade situations, but at this moment of time, it is certainly raining on Boston Breach. They are not having any fun here on Berlin. Even Krim at the point there eats a frag grenade, devours his next player and it's TJ. Falls back over towards the point. Clean shots out the automaton, stays alive. 18 and 9. Paul X. The rest of his teammates, everyone's frying. So back over to P1. And the lead is only getting larger. It is only getting more sizable. It is only getting thicker. As Boston Breach, they are fading out here on Berlin. And subliners also, in the meantime, are getting like more automaton kills on this map than uh, I feel like we are used to seeing. I mean, Hydra's in the feed with automaton kills. Kismet's been in the feed with automaton kills. And they've just straight up dominated this game. Even when Hydra's last man standing, he still manages to find an extra kill. Great at Boston's going to be able to get that scrap time, but the rotation, it will be the subliners here first. And I mean, frankly, it's shaping up to look like they can't do any wrong in this game. And I like the play from Kismet, taking a little bit of extra time before you make your move. Try to get these kills closer to win the hill pops. There's the close kills indeed. He's just eating them alive. There's not a hope in hell right now for Boston Breach on Berlin. We are going to have to see them shed their skin in a tremendous way. This is such a hard map for them. They're struggling. I don't know what to say, Chance. It's such a bad one, but it's not over yet. We're still not counting them out truly. The break's on. It, all they have to do is take care of Hydra. Easier said than done as he's managed to find one. Caps and Wall on the prowl now, trying to take care of him. Paul from the top side, brought down as well. Cap's still going, but he has got Hydra in on that point somewhere. Can the do -si do the ring around a Rosie come to a close? And will it be Boston who come out on top? Final 30 here on P2. Ah, uh, maybe an opening to actually start to push and flip those spawns, but that's not going to be the case. Subliner still spawn over back towards new. This is still great time to get, though. These final 20 seconds will be easily secured and obviously plenty of time to work with to actually try to make this break. Capsule first one to strike and, well, just gets traded instantly. Number two, though, Methods is pushed up the dock side of the map. So actually now the Subliners, well, would have been spawning out. But a couple players Ooh. fall. TJ trying to make the big play, but as soon as you die towards Doc, Subliners just spawn right back inside the hill, and they will be able to keep this control as the hill pops. Capsule, he, he's in the middle of everyone right now. Can't get any more kills. He's bought his teammates a bit of space to work with. Can they get in, get the guns up, and get some of these players from the New York Subliners back on a spawn? TJ through the front line now. His teammates are getting dropped all around him. He gets one. Capsule with a nade now from plat side. Shots are good. Into the point. He finally goes. The contest could get to the column, but not enough to get the fight. Nero now on point. Does manage to win one, but again, the teamwork is so on point right now for the New York Subliners. Hydra on the flank. A three spree for he. It is is a delight to watch but boston they're not out of this yet chance they're fighting tooth and nail to stay alive i mean i would go ahead and say that they're out of it i mean they do get the break on the hill right, but right. like it's not like they're doing it with teamwork it doesn't feel like they're just trying to do it with like overwhelming pressure and it's one of those things where like any flank just turns into a dagger i mean paul x gets set up on their rotation this should be a freebie on tj and well there's at least the first now you're set up in a pinch but I don't know, Boston just feel a little bit scattered, but hey, maybe pull something together and get back in this game. It is only a 60 point deficit. It's not fun, but it's still doable, but not the best start as Paul X has made his way inside the hill. Yeah, he's in, he's set up, Hydra's on the back. Your players take care of the front side as well. Sees an ankle of Nero. He's a dead man now. Beautiful shots out of Hydra, gets the job done. A Mountain Dew featured player doing the dirty work here on Berlin. The rest of his teammates now on spawn trying to make their way through train not able to get into the point just yet and this is good pressure out of, of boston they're staying alive here they're keeping the members of the subliners back and they have flipped the sports that's what i'm saying like the, the pressure has always felt fine just about stringing something together maybe picking it up a little bit in the kills column 
Again, I mean, they come into this hill down by about 60. Now, if you get the final 15 seconds, you only be down by about, you know, 35, 40 seconds. So they're working on it. And Capsule's heated up a little bit as well. He was dancing around like the 0.6 territory. Now he's back to even. Nero was double neg for a while. He's getting a little bit closer. So they have a little bit of momentum. And while well, you got number one Capsule in the back, potentially to flip these bongs long term. So Breach are trying to set themselves up. And you start winning some of these gunfights, it becomes more and more doable. Uh, 200 points now across for the New York subliners. We're back in business, and now P5 is up. Not an easy one to hold, not an easy one to get time on, but here we go, Boston. Start to do the unthinkable. Try to find that time. Subliners are in it for now. Looking for a kill or two. Kismet with the coverage, but Boston is still fighting for that map control. They're doing everything right, but just got to get these players off the point. Here we go. Finally, some time going their way. Keep that pressure on. Take care of Krim on the other side of the roof. Methods is there, and I hate to say it, I'm starting to get a little bit biased. I want this comeback to happen. Yeah, it, look, it's doable. It is absolutely doable, Miles, just because they put so much emphasis on the P1 side spawns that, I mean, you can actually chain that one into a money hill and get a full 60, and they're winning the key gunfights on rotation as well. So Nero, the first one to be set up, he's able to pick up two. His teammates off spawn, slotting in, filling in that position, but now it's Kismet uh -oh. trying to break the mold. He's at least able to strike down one, but he is getting hunted. He is tagged up. He is dropped in Boston. Perfect clearance on this P1 hill. It didn't account for Hydra, though. He manages to get in from behind. And who is that on the flank of all flanks? It is Paul X. We'll check in with him in a moment. He might run into Capstor off spawn, but here we go. The fight now towards the close side of the hard point as Paul's made his way through. Will he be able to take care of these players? No, that's going to be the spawners from behind. Unfortunate timing. The hard point is open for a moment. Over now towards Hydra trying to make the break. Two members of the Boston Breach in there. He could get caught out on the timing again, but no, the Phenom. The Phenom manages to land a pair of them. The break is almost good. You've got one more on point. Teach wins the fight. That's massive. You stay alive for Boston Breach. Here comes Kismet. Kismet finds only one. And the hard point is still Boston Breach. TJ goes crazy in the hill, man. He goes crazy in the hill. And well, actually, dude, look at the fight for scrap time, by the way. Crim6 actually makes the play, wins one. And well, oh, that'll man. make his team incredibly close just to winning it now. They'll be about 15 points away and they get the setup early on. Now the subliners can end the game here. Got to get it done right here, right now on P2 in the final set. Capsule through the front, done. Paul's on the point, cleaned up. Trades come through. Zinni from the top rope, absolutely ripped out of his gaming chair. Five seconds now, and it is done. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, the subliners. They snuff out Boston Breach there on Berlin. The dream dies, but hey, we saw some signs of life just a little too late there out of the Boston Breach. Subliners get the job done. Yeah, they really started to sweat for it. But uh, again, you know, nice plays for Crim6 towards the end. Just to, uh, I mean, again, you chow those old 10 seconds. That is now 10 seconds. You collect the other team does not. It is basically a nice little 20 point swing. And I'd say at that point, you're just way too close to being able to end the game. Because if Crim doesn't make that play, actually, I mean, even if Kismet still picks up the two piece, if everything plays out perfectly well, you at least for Boston to have one more opportunity after that to make the attack. But some miners making the small plays later on. And I think Boston may be feeling a, a little bit of that pressure. Capsule dips out. And I think that's what the technical 0-30 stat line, if the stats guys have anything to say about it. Yeah, and if there's a ranked, he loses some points as well. Oof, load it. What a series it was, friends. There we go. The subline is clearing house, taking care of business. We saw some great plays all around. Good stuff out of Kismet. You know, pretty much from start to finish, Hydra always has his moments. Beautiful work either way. But Boston, mate, I mean... It's not bad. It's not abysmal. You know, at times it was here on Boston, on, on Berlin. They simply didn't have an answer for a lot of what the New York subliners really brought to the field. But hey, back to the lab they go. Maybe a bit of work on the control game mode as well. Get that Berlin control up and about. You want to create some options there when it comes to the vetoes. But hey, this is all speculation and conjecture based on what we've seen today. Was not a bad look in the search and destroy, but New York subline is keeping the run going. Man alive. Paul with the four spree there. That was another absolute blinder from him five spree paul is an absolute menace yeah i mean literally just picking him apart i mean kismet again was getting like a ton of value out of every single one of his lives early on paul x was going on tears crim six also had another game where uh, i mean he was what leading the entire lobby in slang so crim six was having a, a great one as well even making the, the big brain plays towards the end but i'd say on the flip side for boston like when they play search and destroy it like it is easily identifiable how good their teamwork is at times and 
at least for that map on the, the hard point for Berlin, it just doesn't feel like the teamwork comes into effect as often. Like it's almost more reliant. Either Capsule and Neo are gonna fry or they're gonna get smoked and it is like live or die by that theme. But obviously not a, a terrible performance in the end, but another one of those games for Boston where it is a, a tippy top team you're playing against and they just didn't quite have enough in the tank. They fell a little short there, but again, keeping things as close as they possibly could. Gavutu Control certainly needed the work there, but hey, Dustin Search and Destroy, we saw some great individual plays. Good snipes out of Tej. A lot of fun in that matchup again. The 1v3 from Nero as well. Still hope for Boston Breach. A little bit of work needed done there against their old New York rivals, but that is that, friends. The series comes to a close. 3 1. New York Subliners, our Mountain Dew marquee match in the books, and our last match of the week here leading up over towards Major 3. And just what? Uh, I, I cannot, firstly, can't wait to get to Toronto to see the fans. And we know the VIP tickets are sold. It's still some general admission tickets available for every day. Cannot wait to get down to Toronto and see what happens there because every Major has been wild so far. And no doubt about it, this one will be special too. Now it's over to the beautiful desk. Veli, Ali, are you both still wearing sunglasses indoors? Miles, of course, man. You know what I'm saying? We feel the kind of movie stars right now. How are you feeling now? <laughs> I'm feeling great. I can't see anything right now, not really just can't. because it's dark, but at least we look good. <laughs> exactly. But you know who looked even better is the New York Subliners getting that big win right there. I do got to say this. I'm really loving the killer instinct that they're showing series after series once again. When it was P4 and Paul was in the hill and you thought NYSL was going to get spawn trapped while Boston was trying to get back into the lead, right? We saw Hydra make a big flank over to P3 got it done. Paul, meanwhile, is holding on to P4 and cleans out all of Boston Breach. Like, how does plays like that continuously happen when Boston seems to be in a fight and they outnumbered NYSO? I feel like when you're going up against a team like New York Subliners, even if you have three people down and Hydra is that last person Watch alive, you still have to be on your toes because Hydra will pop a two-piece and absolutely neutralize the work that you put in to get that control of the map. We saw it all throughout the Tuscan, even in that Berlin. Hydra was the one making the longest of flanks to get behind you, and it was like you just forgot he was there. If I was going up <laughs> against this team, I would just be like, where's Hydra? Where's Hydra? Do we know where Hydra is? Is Hydra dead? Is he off spawn? Where is this guy? Because the amount of times he was just there early on rotation, sitting in a corner, getting that early kills, getting behind you and waiting for his team to break the kill. The decision making from the likes of Hydra was insane to watch on the minimap during the series. You're right, Boston's gonna have to start watching those flanks. But the one thing Boston did extremely well, though, when it came to search and destroy, the first bloods were ridiculous. I mean, it was outright insane. It's one thing to see one kill off the rip within the first 10 seconds, but the way Boston did it, they steamrolled NYSL. We saw cases of what? 2Ks and 3Ks and routes to winning a round within the first 20 seconds. Boston was on point there, but I would love to see them really pick things up on respawn. I'm right there with you on the respawn thing. It just feels like nobody's watching their back, and by the time they choose to pick it up, it's a second. Just a literal second too late. Their search and destroys, we knew they were going to be good. They're arguably one of the best search and destroy teams in the game, but in the respawn, they just cannot get something going. Tuscan was the hard point they needed to win in this series. It is NYSL's worst hard point, and they still weren't able to close it out. Yeah, so um, the question is, can anybody out there really neutralize a player like Hydra when he's on a roll like that? SMGs, ARs, it really doesn't matter. But also, Ali, at the end of the day, any um, boat you like to put on top of this series right here? I, I really wanted this to go to a game five. I, I really expected more from Boston. It still kind of went the distance, but I will say New York Subliners just continued to impress. I think they just continue to prove themselves and for being a roster that has gone through so many changes, so many feats good to be they? beating teams in the way that they are pushing teams like a fan, Atlanta Faze, the way that they are. I'm very interested to see what they are doing going forward. With points currently in the conversation right now, New York Subliners got a big win, and hopefully we can see the match chance at the end of the year. It's all going to be on if they can win it out. But we also have a Game Fuel post-victory spotlight. Let's go ahead and get them on screen. Shout out to Paul. Paul, you guys were insane, man. But one big question to you, okay? You all got a big, good win, right? I love seeing you guys be successful. But in Search and Destroy, you got you got destroyed when it came to First Bloods. Was there any lessons learned in that have three or two players die at the beginning and to better that next time around? Because you and also Kismet have been going off in that game type. Yeah, no. Uh, even when it was happening and we were dying instantly, I, I mentioned, I'm like, bro, we just cannot die like that. Like, the rounds were going so fast, we were literally all dropping instantly. Um, I think we definitely learned our lesson not to get so aggressive or like to do more <laughs> stuff together, like more teammates and stuns or something because we were just going like straight fucking raw dog. I'm, I'm sorry for cussing. <laughs> we just went straight raw, bro. Like nothing. Like we just try to, you know, 
So I, we definitely learned something from that. Hey, teachers on your hands, but you still won. It's so better to ask for you. forgiveness than permission in these exactly. kinds of situations, Paul. But I will say, when it came to that search and destroy, you guys definitely started to make the comeback. You definitely pulled the pace back in your favor, and I'm interested to seeing that more when it comes to you guys moving forward. But I have to ask, I saw a tweet on the timeline the other day, um, but you live it on blast. Somebody said, I can't believe I get the team with Crim 6, and I believe you're the menace in that situation? Oh, that was me for sure. Honestly, like... <laughs> <laughs> I was rotating to like P3 on Bokage and I just had a stun in my hand and I'm like it was like Porter bump and I'm like as I told as I said that I'm like did I just tell fucking Krim to bump? Like, <laughs> this is this is that that was I don't know, I just had like a realization. Hey, you're living That's your crazy. best life right now. But hey, shout out to you guys. NY, you guys are getting a really big fan base. That's super supportive. My my mentions are nuts. Um anything you wanna say to the, the diehards out there? I mean, I appreciate appreciate you guys sticking through with us, even though, you know, we haven't been having the best years, but, you know, we're turning around now, and, you know, the people that doubt us and still do, like, y'all could kick rocks. <laughs> I really, you know what I'm saying? But to all the supporters, I appreciate you guys. Hey, Paul, very last question. I'm, I'm making it quick. Um, You guys are sitting, uh, I believe, 50 points now with that win, and you're, you're sitting outside of the range for champs. Has that been a big conversation behind the scenes with your team? Because time is clicking. Nah, we're not, we actually just had this conversation. Uh, we're not looking at like the points anymore. We used to, but it's really one map at a time, one game at a time. Okay. And eventually, yeah. you know, we're gonna qualify, so. Fire take. Just we'll fire, man. Hey, Paul, you take it easy, man, and then we'll catch you next time. Appreciate it, thank you, you as well. <laughs> no problem, much love. All right, so um, there we have it right there. Take a look at the points we were just talking about. New York Subliner sitting in 11th place. Remember, top eight goes to champ sitting ahead of them. Currently, the Minnesota Rocker, who got a big win today. Also, the Toronto Ultra, all fighting to replace um, the tie. I guess between Florida and Toronto, this this is pretty messy. It is pretty messy, but again, New York Subliners, they have a good path ahead of them and the likes that a lot of teams above them are struggling while they are on a okay. menace. They are on a revenge tour right now to try and force their way into champs. So like Paul said, they're not worried. They're not thinking about it. They are looking at the matches ahead, going map by map, just cr trying to get these dubs under their belt. And sitting in seventh place is going to be Seattle Surge, who got a very important dub to stay in the race, right? To stay in the conversation. They went against Paris Legion and even though it was a good win, it really wasn't. If you took a look at the game, Paris blew away a lot of opportunities to yeah. grab hold of the lead, but it was Seattle that came out on top. Paris certainly kind of just handed on a silver they platter did. a lot of situations for Seattle Surge to be able to come out on top in this series, but it was a big win regardless. It was something Seattle desperately needed because of the storyline that they can't beat anybody below them, but they'll beat everybody above them. But I will say, I like what I'm seeing out of Paris. I don't think they're completely out of the conversation yet they are 12th in CEL points they are 12th overall as a team as a whole but the individual plays some of these players are making it makes you want to believe in the fact that they can make a turnaround oh they're definitely getting better I want to see Paris Legion play the upset team right now I want them to ruin everybody's chances <laughs> that they go against but I'm also talking about chances the Minnesota Rocker better theirs they got a big win over a team yeah. that wow. was second place in a Pram classic got a big win to start off the week and then they fell extremely short to Minnesota Minnesota got a 3-0 but I want to give a lot of credit right now to Attach and Havoc and also Priest. You know, give it to the whole team, especially Super Saiyan Standy. Priest went positive for, what, the fifth series this year? And the fact that when he did it, Minnesota looked way better than L.A. And I, I would have never guessed that. I would have never guessed that. Maybe I said that these series were going to be long today, but this one was not long at all. And it was in Minnesota Rockers' favor, which I also did not expect at all. But I have to talk on the part of L.A. Thieves. We oh, thought they were hitting their incline, right? We thought, all right, Kenny finally is comfortable in his new role. They're going to hit a stride here. They're going to get back to form. And then they get handed a loss like this. And I hate coming at Kenny the way I have been coming at Kenny. But he had a .67 in the hard point, a .3 in the S&D, and he still ended negative in the control. I get it. You're in a new role, but you've had time to practice now. And if it's just not working, you'll need to start having the You know, I, I think it was the whole team. This is my take, and I don't care what anybody thinks of it. I think Minnesota just dogged the whole team entirely. I don't think it was just one individual player. I think Minnesota was just better in general. LA just underperformed and that's basically that. But also, the Aim Lab best shots of the week. We saw some amazing snipes. Shout out to Insight as well. And big shout out to Temp who um, what, got the record for seven in a single S&D game. Yeah, no, that was insane. The shots out of some of these players, I just have no idea how they're hitting, but I cannot stress enough how much I love the sniper being in this game.
Yo, yo, wait. I, I want to see if we get him um, attached um, his 2K to the window right oh, here. There it that is. was so key. These are impact kills, baby. And he wins rounds with him, attached with something different. Ooh. But Temp was on another level today. Yeah, Temp, Temp, we can hear his frustration in Kong. Temp is always on another level, <laughs> I feel like. But the sniping <laughs> on the Tuscan SD certainly <laughs> puts the cherry on top. Yo, okay, the, the part about T sniping today, he missed a lot of gimmies, but he baked out a lot of players as well. So yeah. I really can't hate on him, but imagine if he was like on point with all of them. He would have been, he would have had the record. He would have had the record outright. Easily. But you know what? Easily. I respect some of the kills that he had gotten today. Or first bless. And also, if you guys want to take a look at some of the settings that your favorite pro players have, you might want to copy them. Go ahead and take a look. You see the website in the bottom of your screen. Don't be shy. Check it out. And Ali, that wraps up week one of the Major 3 Qualifier. Shout out to Toronto Ultra for hosting that event soon. Anything you want to say to what we've seen so far because um, the, <laughs> the confusion of matches that we've seen so far with the <laughs> results that we've gotten has it's been, it's been a treat. It's exciting because the scales just keep tipping back and forth and back and forth. Then at the end of the day, Vanguard is Vanguard and we don't know who's going to come out on top. Also, Bounty Week is going to kick off next time you see us on screen. We have a list of matchups, and check this out. If these teams win these designated matchups, not just 10K for just a whole entire event, we're talking about 10K per each team that wins. We're going to kick it off with London Royal Ravens, and shout out to Harry, by the way, facing off against Boston Breach, who should be extremely upset with that loss we just saw. I'm pretty sure they want to get that win, plus the money in their pocket after that one. And then we're going to kick off, excuse me, end off the entire Bounty Week with Atlanta versus Texas, but everything in between is going to be pretty hot. I'm looking at Seattle versus LADs right now. After the match that we just saw out of LADs and the one out of Seattle, LA I, think, I feel like that's going to be a grueler of a match. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a grueler of the match, but at the end of the day as well, we're going to see um, who exactly wants it more. But also, make sure you get these tickets. Make sure you not only go to Major 3 to see the games, but you go to Major 3 to also compete. Like I said, it's kind of like a rite of passage in Call of Duty. Playing there is just the best. Absolutely, and it's the best way to get noticed as well. Placing high at this land will surely get you noticed by the CDL teams. I mean, you've saw it in the likes of Toronto Ultra NA and EU. They have two rosters under a CDL franchise team that everybody is looking at across oh, yeah. the board. So go make a name for yourself. It's not just to get noticed as well. It's fun as hell, okay? Going to these events, we, we heard Nameless when we was in Minnesota, Allie getting the crowd hype in Texas. Like, this is it. This year has been so fun when it comes to the land events, but also this has been a very fun week and I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in so far but once again I want to thank all of the teams that competed this weekend, the winners and the losers. Most importantly I want to give a big shout out to the fans because without you guys we are absolutely nothing. Call of Duty Vanguard is heating up bigger than ever this year and the competition is pretty crazy. When it comes to the results you can't even flip a coin at it okay. It's just that much fun. But next week the bounty week starts and I can't wait to see which teams run away with $10,000 each in their pocket. We'll catch you guys next time. Take care of yourself. I love you. Stay healthy. Spread love. And we'll catch you next time for some more Call of Duty action. Bye.